Hey everyone, how's it going? A Dukeme player here, and have you noticed how E Honda is the only classic Street Fighter 2 character is still missing from Street Fighter 5? His chances are pretty good though. Depending on when you're watching this video, he might even have been finally added to the roster. In any case, I thought this would be a good opportunity to remember some of our favorite sumo wrestlers from fighting games. But before we get to his peers, let's talk about the man himself. Edmund Honda is an obese yet muscular Japanese man. Similarly in his late 30s to early 40s, while not having the same height as Sagat or Zangief, he is still quite tall despite not looking so due to his fighting stance with flexed knees and hunchback. Honda sports a traditional Chon Mage hairstyle and wears only a white and light blue mawashi, with a striking red fundoshi underneath. His face is painted in the Kumadori style of red makeup used in Kabuki and he traditionally fights barefoot. Even though a lot of artwork depicts him wearing a pair of geta, the traditional Japanese wooden sandals with two elevator clocks. He began his training as a child, completely focused on becoming the greatest sumo wrestler of all time, eventually achieving the highly revered title of Ozeki. Some translations go a little further, giving him the rank of Yokozuna, which is incorrect, although his recent appearance state that he is generally considered to be good enough for the title. Honda is an honorable and friendly man who warmly welcomes people he sees as good. He is also very ambitious in regards to displaying the strength of sumo to the world, and to that end he always gives his all during his training and fighting regiments. He is a big fan of hot streaming baths between training sessions, which explains why his stages are always centered around bathhouses. Despite his apparent lack of agility and portrayal in other media as clumsy or silly, Honda is a very powerful sumo grandmaster. He takes both his sumo art and his rikishi title very seriously, considering it a sacred martial art just like any other. Honda often throws a handful of salt in front of him before he begins to fight, in reference to the real-life sumo ritual often performed as a means of purification called shubats. Interesting enough, in Street Fighter 4's Omega mode, the South Toss was made into a special move, albeit a nearly useless one. Perhaps in the future we might see a more viable version of this attack. As a character, Honda can be played in different ways depending on your preference or the matchup. His more common style, however, is that of a defensive, footsie space type character, taking advantage of his good normals to keep the opponent away. He can also be effective at staying in to apply pressure and chip damage though, thanks to his Hyakuretsu Haidete, aka Hundred hand slaps, and the Ochio Nage, his command throw. Most of the time, Honda's biggest issue is getting around the so called fireball characters, which can really test your patience and require you to advance carefully to navigate between their barrage of projectiles. Still, he does relatively well in most games, occupying somewhere around the middle of the roster in tier lists, and sometimes even a little higher. Our second representative of the style comes from a major 3D fighting game franchise, even though he is, at least for now, absent from its latest iteration. The man of the hour is Gang Ryu, first seen in the original Tekken. Gang Ryu is a tall and imposing figure, well built with a large stature and muscles befitting of a rikishi. He wears his hair in a chonmage topknot, as is the tradition in his sport, and has a visible birthmark or scar on his forehead. His most recognizable outfit is the traditional rikishi attire, which consists of a mawashi and bandages wrapped around his wrists and ankles. Ganryu was always talented in the art of sumo, so much so that he was the youngest fighter ever to reach the rank of Ozeki. His skills were more than enough for him to go even further and become a yokozuna, but it was his lifestyle outside of the ring that became his downfall. When he was dishonorably discharged from the sport due to his arrogant attitude and illicit gambling habit, Ganryu decided to enter the King of Iron Fist tournament in order to prove his strength. While he failed to win the competition, his efforts were enough to impress Kazuya Mishima, who would later hire him as a bodyguard. Upon being sent in a mission to find Michelle Chang and seize an amulet in her possession, Ganryu fell in love with his target, an affection that was unreciprocated leading him to be rejected and change his ways, abandoning his life of crime and moving to Hawaii to open a sumo stable of his own. He lived there in peace for nearly 20 years until his attention was caught by a competitor in the fourth King of Iron Fist tournament, a young woman called Julia Chang, adoptive daughter and spitting image of her mother, Michelle. Needless to say, Gan Ryu was once again hit by Cupid's arrow, 
setting up to help Julia obtain the Disc of Forest Restoration research data in the hopes of winning her heart and making her his beloved wife. He did find the data, but his love was, once again, unacknowledged and unreciprocated, which led him to go back to Hawaii and open a restaurant called Chanko Paradise, which also failed, adding financial difficulties to his list of problems in life. The last time we saw him in a game, this poor Rikishi had entered the 6th King of the Iron Fist tournament in hopes of winning the prize money to save his restaurant. Gameplay-wise, Ganyu started out as a Jack clone character, slow and powerful, with some additional moves of his own, mainly consisting of heavy strikes, pop-ups and rapid slaps. Since his return in Tekken 5, his moveset has been expanded greatly. While not being the fastest of characters, Ganyu is balanced flexible and surprisingly agile, allowing for some pretty deceptive low attacks and surprising tactics. His pokes hit hard and are pretty safe, and he's got several short string combos that can be used effectively. His speed, while slightly faster than Jack's level, is still below average. Like Honda, Gun Yu usually floats around the middle of the pack as far as tier list goes, sometimes climbing a little higher and sometimes falling a little lower. I'm sure that by now, many of you might be expecting my next example to come from a certain other big 3D fighting game franchise. We'll get to him later, I promise, but for now allow me to subvert your expectations and mention two fighters you probably didn't know existed, Mitsuji Tanimachi and Harima O from Battle K Row. The reason I'm so confident most of you were unaware of these guys, and their game of origin for that matter, is because that also applies to me. So, as I always do when a weird or unknown fighting game appears in a list like this, I'll take a step back and talk about the game a little bit before we move on to our sumo representatives. Battle K Road is a one on one 2D arcade fighting game, released in 1994 by Psycho, a company that would go on to be known almost exclusively for shoot 'em ups like Gunbird and Strikers 1945. In a clear attempt to deliver a very different experience than its competitors, Battle K Row changed things in more ways than you can imagine. Nearly everything about the game defies contemporary convention, like quarter circle forward inputs producing dashes, rounds restarting every single time someone gets knocked down, 2D characters having 3DS commands for inputs, or every attack having to be blocked either high or low with no universally safe option. The game even had an actual bear as a playable fighter, almost a year before Tekken did the same. With not exactly the biggest budget in the history of gaming, Psycho, or however that is pronounced, cut a lot and I do mean a lot of corners when it comes to Battle K Rose roster. Out of the 14 characters, 7 are just head swaps. This means that every styled feature in the game actually comes with two, air quotes, different characters and that's why this time we have two sumo wrestlers to cover in this game. The first one is Mitsuji Tanimachi, an 18 years old Rikishi from Japan. He is inspired by Takanohana Koji, a real life sumo wrestler who became Yokozuna in 1995, when he was only 23 years old. Mitsuji's palette swap option is Harimao, a 39 years old Brazilian, half Japanese, sumo wrestler. Hey, look at that! A very obscure Brazilian fighting game character. I know some of you have been asking in the comments for something like this, so there you go. Anyway, like Mitsuji, Harimao is also inspired by a real-life sumo wrestler. In his case, it's Chionofuji Mitsugu, a former champion sumo wrestler and the 58th Yokozuna of the sport. And uh, I'm afraid that pretty much covers everything I know about Mitsuji and Harimao. Battle K Ro didn't exactly become a huge success, so there doesn't seem to be a community built around it. Certainly not enough to produce a reliable tier list. Leave a comment below if you know something that I don't. And so we move on to our next entry, and it's finally time for that sumo wrestler I left behind, Takarashi from the Virtua Fighter franchise. Although not nearly as popular as he once was, I don't think the Virtua Fighter has fallen so much as to not even be remembered, so all that I'm gonna say about it is that it was undoubtedly one of the most important fighting games in history. It introduced the genre to a new 3D type of environment that would later go on to be adopted by many other popular franchises, like Tekken and Soul Calibur. Takarashi, however, was not present in the first game. He made his debut in Virtua Fighter 3 and did not return until Virtua Fighter 5R, 
since he was deemed too difficult to integrate. Series producer Hiroshi Kataoka explained that this was due to the technical implications of having a substantially larger character in the roster. Taka had in fact nearly been cut from Virtua Fighter 3 due to the difficulties with his jumping moves. So far, he bears the unpleasant distinction of being the only character in the series to have ever been dropped from a game. From a more lore-oriented point of view, Takarashi was known in the sumo world for his unusually brutal fighting style. One day, while entertaining at an American bar, he agreed to settle an argument in an underground fist fight, which he easily won, despite his opponent being famous in the world of underground fighting. Upon his return to Japan, Takarashi decided to abandon his career as a sumo wrestler and soon received an invitation to join the third world fighting tournament, which he was more than excited to accept, his blood still boiling with the thrill of battle. After that, we entered a long period of time when Taka was nowhere to be seen in the games, which was addressed in his Virtua Fighter 5 story. We learned then that Taka's participation in the third world tournament didn't exactly go as planned. He had been an undefeated sumo wrestler since his childhood. Sumo was his whole life and part of his blood, but it did not save him from being defeated by the lineup horde of veteran fighters present at the tournament. All of them were true masters of fighting styles Taka was simply too unfamiliar with, causing him to suffer a regrettable defeat and, in his mind, an unprecedented humiliation. After that, Takarashi moved away from the Samo world and returned to his mountain village, a place where he used to train. He had completely lost his motivation, however, and was engulfed by desperation and self-pity. He was saved by a Samo coach that prompted Taka to make a return to the Sumo world, which he eventually agreed to, devoting himself more than ever, trying to erase the shameful defeats in his past. As time passed, Takarashi returned to and surpassed his best form, establishing an unparalleled record of consecutive victories, to the point where people were starting to wonder who could ever stop him. One day, when he was expected to appear at the final day of a big sumo tournament, Taka simply did not show up, instead going to the fifth world tournament, decided to erase the past and this time create havoc among the other fighters. In the game, because he's such a large character, many of the techniques that would work on most other combatants don't really work the same way against him. Takarashi also has the strongest throw game of the entire cast of characters and an exceptionally dangerous low-risk mid-launcher. He can make an opponent's life truly miserable since no other character has such a strong balance of combo damage and high damage throws in both directions. Takwa can also ring out opponents with ease, and his wall game is absolutely ferocious. His most unique characteristic, however, is his super heavy weight class. Because of it, some moves that knock down other characters won't work the same way against Takarashi. If a move's damage value is less than 20, he won't knock him down. Not that any of this seems to be enough to save him from the bottom of tier list, so it seems you have your work cut out for you if you intend to help him finally erase the shame from his past. But for now, we'll move on, back to Capcom as the Rival Schools franchise, which by the way is long overdue for a sequel, has another practitioner of the art, Gun Nisirugi. Gun is a fun-loving but simple-minded man who believes just about anything, and for that, he'll almost never notice if someone is taking advantage of him. As you can imagine by his size, he likes to eat, so he always looks forward to having three meals a day, each one always containing multiple cups of rice stacked on top of each other. As most characters in the franchise, Gun is still a student, attending to the Gedo High School, where he also doubles as a loyal member of the school's gang. Alongside Edge, Gun joined the disguised Akira from within her personal mission of locating the whereabouts of the school's missing gang leader, Daigo. No, not this one. Who happens to be her older brother. Like Edge, Gun is initially distrustful of Akira, but eventually comes to accept her as part of the gang, even after she reveals her own true identity to them. In the sequel, Project Justice, Gun and Edge are sent by a returning Daigo to attack random schools for little to no reason whatsoever. Eventually, they learn that Daigo has been brainwashed by Kuro, who seeks to cause tension and distrust among schools as part of his evil plan. With the help of Akira and her new teammate, Zaki, they are able to release Daigo from his mind control and eventually defeat Kuro and his allies. In the end, Gun, as well as Edge, 
are charged with watching over Ghetto High School, as their leader once again leaves for another journey of personal training, in order to return stronger both physically and mentally. Gameplay-wise, as expected, Gun makes use of techniques based on sumo wrestling, dealing massive damage every time he lands a good hit. Due to his size, however, he is extremely slow, making him a very difficult character to play with. Most will agree that Gun is one of the worst characters in the roster, so once again, you have your work cut out for you if you're planning to use a summer wrestler in this title. Well, we've covered most of the big ones already, no pun intended, but there is still time for one more very, very wacky name to be added. But before we get to that, I should give at least an honorable mention to Hinako Shijo from the King of Fighters franchise. It's not every day that we see a female practitioner of sumo, let alone a tiny schoolgirl, so Hinako truly is special. Since she was already covered in another video though, called Sakura and Schoolgirl Fighters, she gets only a mention this time. I'll leave a link below for that video, just in case you want to check her out after this. So, we're good? Well then, hold your horses, cause here's the most wacky sumo wrestler I could find in a fighting game. Tsunami from Balls, or however that is actually pronounced. If you were not around during the 90s, you probably missed on this strange title, developed by PF Magic and published by Accolade in 1994. Balls is a unique fighting game, one of the first to attempt to use 3D on the SNES, although it is limited to characters sidestepping into the foreground and background, a la Tekken 3. Its 8 characters and 4 bosses are similar to the polygonal characters found in other fighting games, except they are all composed of 3D spheres. And they're quite bizarre, too. The lineup includes things like a farty monkey, a jumping clown, a caveman, a bodybuilder, a ballerina, a rhinoceros, a gigantic dinosaur, and yes, a sumo wrestler. Which leads us back to Tsunami, not that I have much more to add about him. This is quite an obscure game, after all. Pretty much everything I have to say is that Tsunami enjoys leaping on top of his opponents. During my research, I did stumble upon a tier list that puts Tsunami dead last, continuing the tradition of sumo wrestlers not being terribly effective. It doesn't have the weight of an active community behind it to give it legitimacy, so take it with a grain of salt, but it seems quite reasonable based on the little I could observe after replaying this game. Anyways, guys, this is it for my list of sumo wrestlers in fighting games. If you have any more suggestions, or if you want to give your opinions about it, you're more than welcome to leave a comment below, I'll try to answer as many as I can. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that yet, and make sure you hit that bell button so you don't miss any of my new videos. Now, before I go, I want to tell you about my World Warrior RPG podcast one more time. It's a real play RPG show set in the Street Fighter universe, with players from all around the world. I might be biased about it, but I really think it's full of adventure, video game references and funny moments. If you can, please go check it out, give it a try. Who knows, you might even end up liking it. Anyways, I've taken enough of your time. I'll leave you guys with some suggestions of other videos in my channel, and we'll talk again soon. Till.